At some point in your filmmaking journey, you're going to have to film someone's face. It might be an interview. It could be a talking head corporate video, a documentary, or a feature film. No matter what you're filming, the goal is to make your subject look the absolute best. And to do that, you need to hit them with enough light to properly expose the image. But too much light will create overexposed skin, harsh shadows, they'll be squinting, and they won't be engaged in the filming process. That would be a huge mistake. In fact, let's compare a few images and see if you can notice a trend. So what do you think? What's the secret here? Well, the images on the left were shot using harsh light, and the images on the right were shot using soft light. So harsh lighting bad and soft light good. So you'd be making a huge mistake to film your subject using harsh lighting. Caveat, there could be times based upon the project or the director's request where harsh lighting is needed. But in most cases, in most movies and films, when you're shooting or filming someone's face, soft lighting is the most flattering. So let me share with you what I did recently to avoid this mistake of shooting with harsh lighting. A couple weeks ago, I was in Washington, D.C. filming an interview with a former high-level government official talking about the crisis at the border. For this piece, our goal was a professional, clean look similar to something you would see on 60 Minutes. For our main key light, we used the Aperture 300D Mark II with a Fresnel attachment. And we used this to focus and control the light directly at our subject. So what do you think is going to happen if we point this 300-watt light directly at our talent's face? Well, it'd be like going outside on a bright sunny day and looking up into the sky. You'd be squinting, uh, your skin would be hot and overexposed. It wouldn't be a good look. So to achieve that soft light we talked about, we put up a 4x4 frame with a sheet of white diffusion paper and placed the frame between the light and the subject. Now, I can't show you the government official's face, but I can show you this BTS photo I took of my friend Andy. Andy was the DP that day and asked him to step in. Notice how soft the light is on the left side of his face. Now, we still have contrast. We still have shadow on the right side, but there's a nice smooth gradation from left to right. It's, there's not like a, a straight hard line, right? It's not two-face. There's a smooth transition from light to dark, and that's what we, that's what we mean when we say soft light. And this results in a more flattering and professional image. Now, you may not have a four by frame, with sheets of diffusion, but here are a couple options in case you don't have one of those. Number one, you can get a softbox. A softbox is simply a large round uh, modifier that you attach to the end of your light, and it also has sheets of diffusion on it. In addition, you can attach a grid to it, and the grid helps to focus and control the light onto your talent, onto your subject, similar to how the Fresnel lens works. In fact, I'm filming with the softbox right now with the grid. The lighting is coming over here, and you'll see a gradual decrease of light on my right side. So the shadow is over here, and the light is hitting me here. This is a nice soft light. So what I'm gonna do next is take off certain elements of my key light and show you what it looks like with or without these elements. Now, what if you don't have a softbox? Well, I've heard of some cinematographers who will just take a bed sheet from a hotel or their bedroom and put it up on a C-stand. And I've seen that work as well. I've actually tried that myself. I've also tried using just a uh, shower curtain, a white shower curtain, and put it on a C-stand. Uh, that's before I had a softbox. So I'm curious, what methods have you used to get that soft look? Leave a comment down below and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Right, this is what the grid looks like.